we are again in Blender and today I'm going to start off with my realistic spaceship tutorial and this will be just modeling I'll do texturing later now one of the things you'll notice is that I'm going to be designing this spaceship in components and it's very important that you don't join these components together until after they've been textured so without further ado let's start. Now the most important thing about designing anything like a spacecraft which doesn't really exist is that you must come up with reasons why it is the way that it is and I've thought about this particular spacecraft for quite a long time and it's going to be built in modules around a spine it's going to have no obvious weapon system though it is a warship. It's going to have um, field generators that will generate shield type fields and because I'm going to be using it in a particular project it's going to need an airlock that beings can come out of. So without further ado let's get going. The first thing I'm going to do is the spine. So I'm going to add get this right. I'm going to add a cylinder and I'm going to design the ship around this orientation anyway. So I need to, first thing I need to do is to scale the cylinder down in the S key. I'm making it smaller because it's going to be quite long and thin and you're not going to see much of this cylinder so it's an ideal thing to start off with anyway because there's not much detail in it and I'm going to hit S and Z to stretch it out and I may be able to shorten this later I don't know, depends how things work out but that is my initial cylinder and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the end because when I say no obvious weapon system well it will have a weapon system and that weapon system is basically a huge railgun that comprises the spine of the ship that it's going to be built around so I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to create the barrel this gun. So face select, I only want that face, inset faces like so and I've still got that face selected so the next thing I need to do is E for extrude and as you can see it extrudes into a barrel and I don't want that barrel to be of infinite depth so there we've got effectively a gun barrel which our spaceship is built around and we'll go back into object mode and that is our first component done now the next thing is there's going to be a number of life support modules there's going to be four and these rotate to give artificial gravity whereas the rest of the ship stays stationary so I'm going to add another cylinder and I want these to be I'm going to scale that up a bit like so, and scale in the Z direction so that it becomes thinner and these do need some detail because they're on the outside of the ship now these essentially will spin around our cylinder and I'm not worried about making a hole in the middle because you'll never see it and I want it to be a really close fit so there we are what I do want however is some detail 
and I'm going to start off by doing exactly the same sort of thing that I've just done by going into edit mode selecting just this top face hitting inset faces to create an inset and then I'm going to just simply move that face down I'm going to hit inset faces again and inset faces again and I'm going to move it up So now you can see we've got this sort of shape and I want to repeat that on the other side it needn't necessarily be exactly the same because you're not going to ever see two of them at the same time so select our face inset faces move it in Inset faces again. Inset faces again. And move it back out. Not quite that much. Something like that. And this is just the start of our detail. Now, creatures being what they are they're going to want some way of seeing out of this thing now they're not really going to want lots and lots of windows in here and so I'm going to let me see we've got 32 vertices so it should come out an even number so I'm going to make windows in some of these so I'm going to do that exactly the same way inset faces S Z so change the actual size S again because I want it a bit smaller then I'm going to push push it inside so that we've got a dent and then I'm going to go to the other side opposite there I'm going to do exactly the same thing So there we are, and the rest of the detail, or most of the rest of the detail, can be put on this by texturing. But I want to create some pieces of, of detail, so I'm going to go on the opposite sides to where those windows are, which is about there. This time I'm going to have a bulge. So again, inset faces. down so it's a square I'm leaving it at the same level I'm going to move it up so it's off centre I'm going to hit E for extrude and in 
set faces again. No, I'm not. I'm going to indent it. No, not going to indent it yet. Control Z to undo that little bit of movement. Inset faces again. SZ. And it's these little odd details that, funnily enough, actually sell things like this. Um, E for extrude, pull it back out. There we have one odd shape on there. And all of these are going to be actually duplicates of each other. All of these habitation areas so to speak and which way did I go on that one I went towards the top I'm going to go towards the bottom on this one and E to extrude more of a spiky protrusion for whatever reason and you can see it's kind of starting to come to life already it's starting to look like a ship and I'm just going to carry on doing this for a while so um, until I've finished I'm going to turn you off because it's just going to be more of the same So I've done all that and I've done everything I can using inset faces and extruding and we're starting to get some complexity here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start subdividing and uh, adding some if you like blocky type equipment details to the outside face on some of these edges. So we'll select the face hit subdivide again and again you can see we've got these blocks now what we can do is select the random no control Z to undo that we can do a checker deselect which will get rid of half of them in the checker pattern well, I want fewer than that so I'm just going to go around and right click on some of these at random and I don't think I want any around the edge so I can get rid of all of those my aim is not so good today oh, I have some larger ones 
and some isolated ones and now I want E to extrude I'm just going to extrude those up a little bit so now we have some odd areas that stick out like it's air conditioning equipment or something like that almost and we'll do the same over here this time we're going to go even smaller hit the A key to get rid of my selection hit C for a circle select and I'm going to reduce the size of it right down so you can see so now I'm going to select individual hit the shift key select some of these individual faces as well so that I've got a pretty random pattern but it's laid out on a grid I don't think I want these so they're on the edge I'll get rid of those add in a few more of these down here and that I think we'll do E to extrude again not extrude too far so now we've got a habitation module that looks quite interesting and by the time it's textured it will be much more interesting than this and we're going to have a number of these along our ship um, so if I go out of edit mode again so how many are we going to have? we're going to have four So now I'm not going to apply this it's just to see what it looks like add modifier array modifier and we don't want it in that direction we want it in the Z direction we want something like 1.15 in there yep three four so now we've got four and they're all in rotating in the same direction at the moment but I'm not going to worry about that actually they do need to be wider than that because what I want is I want these field emitters to poke out of there so they're going to have to be wider than that something like that will do fine now why do I say they're all going to be rotating in different directions well because it makes sense for a spacecraft if they were all rotating in the same direction their rotation wouldn't cancel each other out so you're going to have to have a pair of them going clockwise and a pair of them going counterclockwise so that the rotation balances out and this is the sort of thing you need to think about when you're designing a ship because subconsciously it simply looks more real right so the front of the ship effectively is going to be the drive section and um, The drive isn't going to be a rocket drive, it's going to be some sort of mysterious sort of plasma drive, uh, warp drive type thing. And I struggled for a while about how to do that, and then I suddenly thought, yes, I've got an idea that will work. So here we go, I'm going to add another cylinder, surprise, surprise. Let's move that up. I want to scale it so that it's the same size for the moment as near enough as our accommodation section, which it is. 
and then I'm going to just scale the front of it down so that it cones inwards a bit. So I'm going to go into edit mode, select that face there only, hit S for scale, scale it down, and I'm going to extrude that along. I'm going to scale it again and extrude it and scale it again and now I'm going to do the inset faces move it back in inset faces I'm going to move it back out. So now we've got some detail on that end and we're going to do the same with this. Insert faces, move it in, move it down, and this time I'm going to move it up again. That kind of matches these drive sections. And I want the gap to be about the same, so I can fit in one of my field emitters when I finish designing those and figured out what they're going to do. Excellent. Now, we've got to try and make this look a bit different, a bit alien, a bit exotic. Um, one of the ways of doing that is to add some different shapes in there. And what I'm going to add is a, not a monkey's head, it's a torus. Move that down. Get to scale it out. And as I've said before, actually I think we'll have two of those. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to scale it out. I'm going to make it thinner. Scaling in the Z direction only. So the whole thing then looks something like that. Excellent. And I'm going to be applying some special effects to these toruses here which are the drive toruses and uh, yeah that should look okay okay so next thing these need an obvious connection to our ship so I'm going to select that I'm going to go into edit mode select that face there Inset faces, scale it, and I'm just going to take these two vertices down here. I'll switch to vertices select, I'm going to move those up and out. See, we've got an obvious connection. We'll just straighten that up. You can 
can see what that's done. And we want one on the other side as well. Let's see if I can get it exactly on the opposite side. If we go into view, if we go into orthographic view. Places. Let's grab these two vertices here. good enough for me. So now it's probably about time for a, some sort of test render. So Turn the camera around, select that camera first. If I turn that around through ninety degrees. This render's not going to look terrific, but it lets me give some idea. I'll need to go through first and make sure I've got smooth shading selected on everything. somewhere and up so that it's pointing at roughly the same direction as the camera in that angle but in a somewhat different direction from this angle and we'll change the lamp type to the sun and we're going in about the right direction already so we'll just do a quick render, very quick render, and you can see that yeah, we're starting to look reasonably believable. And remember, the texturing is going to add a whole lot more detail, a whole lot more detail in this. So now we want a back for our spaceship and believe it or not the back for our spaceship is going to be rather different. So I'm going to start off by adding a cylinder again. Oh, 
Oops, which didn't come out in the right place. Hit X because I moved the 3D cursor. So the first thing I want to do is snap cursor to center and add our cylinder. Good. Go into edit mode. Face select. Select that top face. I'm going to scale it up. So it's about the same size as our I'm going to bring it down to increase that gap a bit. So I don't want this back half too long. Good. Then I'm going to take this face here. I'm going to extrude it back. And I'm going to turn it into a square. And the easiest way of doing that, to be honest, is just to move the vertices and um, to give myself a bit of a heads up on that, I'm going to add a cube in first just to give me a guideline, I'll delete it later. Scale that down. It gives me a guideline as to where to move these vertices to. And that's all it is. So now I'm going to go around and move all these vertices. Vertex select. Make sure I can do it by scaling. If I select two opposite vertices, S for scale. slightly quicker. And so on. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do all that. See you in a minute. So that's all done. Now what I want to do is delete the cube and to do that because I'm still in edit mode I use the select linked X get rid of the vertices. You can see what I've got is a bit of a mess but it could be a useful mess or it might not be okay so I think the reason is that I had some things scaled where I shouldn't have had them scaled so let's just correct this so that it's roughly right
something like that. Now, I should be able to straighten these up by hitting all of these. Hitting S, Y, and zero. S, Y, zero, and enter. Same here. This does it just scales those vertices in one direction, gives them a scale of zero, which effectively tidies them up into a straight line. And for this one, it will be S X zero and enter. Except there's some weird things going on somewhere. Maybe the weird things that will work for us rather than against us. some kind of peculiarity here. That's what it is. Okay. S X zero. And that's that sorted out. So that tidied up and we'll just so, oh. Isn't it horrible when you forget to press return? This makes zero. Good. That's good enough. Right. So, if I select the rest of that, which I should be able to do, is select edge loops, yes. And just hit S and X, because what I want to do is I want to flatten this down. This kind of gives the ship a way up, if you know what I mean. I'm going to extend that, extrude it, sorry, get it right. S, X again, take it down. Now you've got a web shape. This 
Y, take it into the thinner wedge. And there we go. And basically you just carry on adding details to your ship design like this until you've got a believable ship. And right. Now the next thing I need to do, I need to move this because if we go back into object mode, we can move these because they're too close to what's above them, that accommodation section there. I need to fit in one of these field projectors. Right, let's try a quick render. Forgot to set that to smooth shading. Try again. Well, that's a bit better. We're starting to see the sh ship starting to take shape. And um, that'll be it for today. I'm going to be adding field projectors and adding some detail to the hull in the next video. Thank you very much. So here is the model. All I've done is slapped an old ship texture that I used on a previous project on it, on everything, uh, apart from the drive which I've animated using a texture and that's not how it'll be eventually but it gives you some idea of the sort of things that are possible. So uh, until the next video I'll see you soon and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much. Well, you could subscribe to Arduino Tronic or just go jump in a lake.